Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today's going to be super fun, you guys. I have a special guest. Um, and what today's video is on is all the products I use on my hair, the process of me dyeing my hair, and how I style it, all the good stuff. If you are new today, the biggest warm welcome to you. And yes, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel uh, at the end of this video. If you enjoy, we would love to have you. All right, you guys, let's just get into this right away and let's go style my hair. Okay, so what I thought is I would show you guys how I dye my hair, what products I use, all that good stuff. I just actually use stuff from Sally's and I use the Age Beautiful. I get the volume 20 and I also use the Age Beautiful dye and I get mine in the shade 3NN. So this is, I believe, darkest, yeah, darkest intense brown. So these are the products I've been using, you guys, for, oh my gosh, I don't even know how many years. Um, and I just do my roots. I never even run it through. I just get the grays that are <laughs> starting to really come through here. Make sure you have a measure. That helps with uh, putting this in there. And I use one of the little um, brushes up here. And I use Vaseline because I'll put it around here so because it will stain. And I make sure I have clips. So that's pretty much all I use to dye my hair. And I'm going to go through the whole process. And let's see what else. Oh, and then Sally sells this cape. So I'll be putting that on as well. So we're just going to get started right away. And I do have a special guest. Uh, <laughs> the person who helps me dye my hair and has for years is my husband. So he's going to be on here and we're going to be answering a lot of questions that uh, I had posted and asked you guys for help uh, here on YouTube on the community tab and also on Instagram. So these are the questions that we got and we are super excited to answer all of them. Uh, we kind of ran through them the other night and we were cracking up and some of these questions were harder than we thought were going to be. Okay, everybody, this is my husband, Daryl. He is not very happy about being on here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need help to do my hair. And a few of you have asked me um, what I do. So we're, I'm going to show you. So I am going to start off with the, um, I don't even know what this is called, you guys. I guess the developer. <laughs> and I only put one ounce in here. And, um, and the reason why, again, because I only do my roots. So I'm only going to use half of the tube so I get two um, applications out of this so I just put that in there okay Daryl do you want to go with the first question while I'm mixing this up okay the first question is from our future daughter-in-law I hope they can hear you so you're gonna have to maybe talk okay well. <laughs> future daughter-in-law asks uh, which of the t your two children are your favorite <laughs> and how do we answer that uh, we answer it, Kane, our dog. Kane, our dog, is our favorite. <laughs> He's our favorite. <laughs> we love our children all the same. We do. We love them. Granted, <laughs> we only have one child, but one future daughter-in-law, yes. so we love them both equally. Yes, yes. They are the apple of our eyes. <laughs> so, and uh, what is the second one? And these are coming from Instagram. There was only two on Instagram. The one is... Um, does he like his nails painted? Oh, absolutely. Bright red. Bright red. He loves it. Now, I don't know. Are we <laughs> are we talking about Kane or me now? <laughs> well, Kane, okay, yeah. I used to paint my other dog uh, when she was um, around, and her name was Mimi. And I used to paint her nails. I kid you not, you guys. Okay, so with this, um, there's actually like a little punk, you know, puncture thing. And I just did that. And they also sell these keys, which is nice. And... On the side here, it tells like how many ounces. So I'm going to use, go up to one ounce. And let me put on my glasses. Otherwise, I will not be able to see where this is. Okay, so is there another question? I got one that's a multi, uh, multi question. You know what? Go back to, we'll go to that later. Is there like a single question? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Um, this one is... How does your husband feel about you giving up uh, some free time for your YouTube channel? And who is this from? This is from Jane Nicoletti. Okay. Um, or... Jane, hold on. Jane also has a YouTube channel here, you guys. Uh, she's awesome. She does a lot of cooking and um, taste tests, and she does some beauty, too. And 
Um, yeah, she does it all. So check out her channel. I'll put up her information in the um, description box below. Okay, go ahead, Daryl. Uh, or is he going to be involved soon? So well, he's involved today. Today, today <laughs> only, probably. <laughs> Um, honestly, how I feel about giving up, uh, some free time with my wife for her YouTube channel, honestly, oh, she's mixing, um, okay. <laughs> honestly, um, I, I was one of her biggest fans, um, I, I pushed her to, to actually do this, uh, very willing to give up free time with her for her dream. Oh, don't start crying. <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, he got teary eyed, you guys. And of course, he always makes me teary eyed when he gets teary eyed. Uh, no, I he's, don't do that anymore. <laughs> he's very, very, very supportive of, of what I do. Um, uh, yeah, you know, we're at that age where we just don't do a lot um, outside of our home. Um, we went out last night for the first time, and I can't even tell you like out out to a bar oh, three years. yeah it's been a long time we had so much fun i went and saw my cousin uh he plays in a band maybe i'll put a clip here you know just so you guys get a glimpse of that um but we, we just had so much fun so we don't do a lot outside the home i mean we go kayaking stuff like that but through the week we really just work and come home so um we're at that age where we're able to do this and not um I don't know. It doesn't take away from, you know, the time, you know. So, uh, you know, he's super, super supportive. Amen. And maybe one day he'll be a little bit more involved. <laughs> um, All right, I'm going to so, get my head, head hair down out of this scrunchie. And I'm going to look like a hot mess. Okay. <laughs> All right. And what I'm going to do is I part it down the middle here. And you guys are going to see some grays. Ooh, yes, you are. Okay, so then I do that. Sorry, I got to use this mirror here too so I can see. And then I kind of just um, take this section here and actually I go all the way down here. And this is going to be hard because I got my hearing aids in today, so we're going to have to be careful. Otherwise, I will not be able to hear a word I'm saying and I'd probably be screaming at you guys. Um, so then I put a clip in here. And then I just do the same on the other side. Yeah, Dale, you're going to have to be a little careful around those hearing aids today. Got it. Okay. And I put that there. And then I take one side. And I clip this side back. Okay. So then I just have this side going on. All right. So now I just begin and Daryl's going to. I always do the front. He helps me with the back. Okay, go ahead. Okay, next question is from Little Bear MG5. Okay. Um, the question is, how and when did you guys meet? Oh boy, who? Good question. It's a great question. It's a fun uh, story, um, and I guess we both can tell this. Yeah. Um, it started off a. There was a mall out here. Uh, it's no longer there. They um, demolitioned it about, what was it, about a year ago? Yeah. So it was so sad when that happened. But anyway, <laughs> I was visiting a, a friend. She worked at the mall. I think the, the store was called Ocotone or something like that. AU Cotton, whatever it was, you guys. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was called then. I still don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, I was visiting her because uh, she was working. And... Uh, and I was visiting a friend who worked across the hall from that store with, and he worked at J Crew. Yep, I think that was the name of it. Now, mind you, all three of the those, my my wife, her friend, and my friend all knew each other from high school. I was from a totally different high school. Yeah, he went to a private school, a Catholic school, and um, I was, you know, at a at a public school in Lake Orion. Um, and so, yeah, Brian went to my school somehow to the, I, to this day, I really don't understand how Daryl knew Brian, but anyway, we'll go from there. So I, we went over to go see, um, Brian across the hall and Daryl was there with the, a couple of other, their friends and 
you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Daryl was very opposite of what I usually, uh, dated back then, but let me tell you what he was wearing and then you Oops. guys can, then you guys can understand where, how this was opposite. Okay. So he was a football player. So he had on his football pants, which were cut. I don't even know. I don't even know what into shorts. And then he had on two different pair of Converse um shoes so one was red and one was black he had on one of those do rags on his head um he had a wad of chew in his mouth which is disgusting uh thank god he quit that habit and uh yeah so this is the paint this picture in your head and i looked at him and was like he is gorgeous i that's the man i'm gonna marry right there <laughs> and the man wouldn't even look at me he was doing one of these you know just kind of looking away and and i'm like oh boy he's one of those stuck up jacks you know uh he yeah which so, i was not well i didn't know that but you were being really distant so i'm like okay well he clearly has no interest in me so anyway i went back you know um my friend that i was visiting uh, her and I went back, hold on, let me try to get these hairs here, uh, went back into her store and I'm like, oh my God, I have to marry that man, you know, and the reason why you guys, are you ready for this? In my head, he looked one of the guys, like Jonathan Knight and, um, what was it? New Kids on the Block. Yeah. And I was obsessed with Jonathan Knight at the time. So that's why I probably was super attracted to Daryl. So... Um, yeah. <laughs> but again, he wouldn't give me the time of day. And so I don't know, a few weeks went on and I saw him at a, no, no, I was at a football game and Brian was at the football game and he came up to me and he goes, um, Hey, do you want to go to a party? I'm having a party tonight after the game. I'm like, I'm like, sure. You know, I, is that guy going to be there? And he's like, Rodney and I'm like no no the other guy he goes Daryl mm -hmm. I'm like yeah um what's the problem here so anyway he said he was going to be there so of course yes I jumped on going um to this party so yeah we were both 18 years old I'm just moving the camera so you can see more Daryl you guys know me so uh he's the star of the show today mm -hmm. where was I at on my story oh so okay so after the game I found out Daryl was going to be at this party, so of course I went. We started talking, and not even a year later, we were married. Right. Like fools, at 19 years old, he was at Ferris State University going to school for um, criminal, yeah, law enforcement, crim criminal justice. Dropped out, uh, <laughs> and yeah, not the smartest thing, you guys. Um, but we made it, you know. After we've been married 30 years now, I'll be 31 and few weeks here um and yeah so you know we made it and you know you a lot of people can't really say that so we're super we went through a lot of hard times um it wasn't easy as you can imagine you know being 19 no education um really no skills <laughs> you know I was in the dental field at that time which I still am but um yeah, I don't recommend it for anybody. We went through major hard hardships uh, financially and um, a lot of hard times. A lot of hard times. I mean, it's still not where we would want to be, but um, at least it's better. He did go back to school. He actually uh, did a, does a trade. He's a master mechanic for Chrysler. So it, that's how we met. So now we're going to Melly Mel. She is a hoot. This girl had so many questions, and I am so appreciative uh, for this because. This is basically going to be the rest of this video because she had so many, um, which I know she was just trying to help me. Uh, I'm sure she's really didn't want to know all of these, but I needed questions and she certainly gave them to me. Okay, so Melly Mel's um, first question is, what's something you used to believe about relationships but no longer do? Okay, so this, we were going through these the other night, you guys, and this was probably the hardest question I've ever um, been asked and we still really don't know how to answer that one because you know we've been together for so long 
that I can't even remember the relationships that I had previously. Um, you I know, can't even remember my expectations as a 19-year-old yeah. <laughs> of what to expect. Exactly. I think we probably both um, thought everything was going to be um, smooth sailing, um, easy. You know, we were super, super in love. Um, and I don't think you really think about the hard times, the hardships. Um, it's so we really didn't have any expectations other than we thought it was going to be, you know, the fairy tale, everything's yeah. perfect type situation. Uh, so that is probably our expectations. And clearly, uh, those were a little high. <laughs> one, one thing I did, um, I was pondering this question for a while. Yeah. One thing I do kind of want to say is, you know, as a as a young teenager, you know, you figure, you know, you watch the movies and see, you know, oh, uh, all you need is love and then you, you live happily ever after. <laughs> and you, you just want to spend as much time with, with your significant other um, and everything's going to be great. You know, you, the, the relationships just will build and build. That's not true. <laughs> oh, it builds. All right. It builds. But you, the, the you, one thing is that I found is you, you cannot be around your spouse 24, 24, seven. Trust me. You, you know. need time away. You do. You absolutely need time away. You need escape. So this is my escape, you guys, is when I do my videos and then I go to edit, um, which is good because he has like this little room down in the basement that's his little man cave. He has his TV, his little Xbox or whatever the heck it is down there. And um, yeah, we all, we both have our own um, passions and um, things that we do separately. And he also is a beautiful uh, he does beautiful woodwork um, back in the day when wood was cheap. Um, right now, he hasn't been doing much. So he also does that. So we have our own um, little, what do you call that? Uh, Hobbies. Okay, so the next question is, what's something surprisingly that you were afraid of as a child? This is a little bit of embarrassing, um, but I do remember as a child, uh, I was afraid of the garage. I don't know why. I think a lot of it has to do with, um, there was this, this show back in our day, uh, The Muppet Show. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, I know, it's it's crazy. You were afraid of the Muppets in your garage? There, there, were, there was one particular Muppet, and I don't remember which one it was because it was so long ago, but I always thought that he was just going to pop up in the garage. Okay. Listen, it says when you were younger. <laughs> I, you know, I, there's the, no rhyme or reason to end How old were you, do you think? Five, six. Aw. Your mom was having you take out the garbage at five or six? She was, she was, a, <laughs> she's like, you got to earn your keep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you poor thing. Um, I, I, okay. I remember what mine was. Um, I was, I was obsessed with the Wizard of Oz and yeah, I yeah. had all of the, you guys to this day, I wish I still had this stuff, but I had like this Emerald city and it had this door that would open Well, my mother thought it was funny to, well, she got this jaws, you know, this plastic jaws, uh, this is back when it, that was big and it was just a shark and she came through the emerald city door and i was scared out of my mind so for the longest time i was afraid of that shark i couldn't even go near it and then um yeah like it's a plastic shark you guys <laughs> but in my head this thing was going to come and eat me what is your favorite food what was your favorite food growing up it would probably just be home cooked meals my dad um you know I'm half Mexican. My dad's Mexican. So he would make these awesome meals um, on Sunday mornings. And that was probably my favorite. You know, when he'd wake up, make these this amazing breakfast that was kind of mixed with American, you know, the eggs, the typical. And then he would have pinot beans and tortillas. And um, so, yeah, it was probably Mexican 
um, food back, you know, when I was growing up. And what about you, Daryl? Me? Um, well, growing up, I remember, uh, I come from a family that both my mom and my dad worked. Actually, my mom worked for my dad. So, um, after school, uh, you know, my sister and I would be at home and just waiting for my parents to get off of work. So, one of my favorite things eating in the meantime, uh, when I got home from school was Chef Boyardee ravioli and <laughs> so things haven't changed much things have not changed a whole lot no. <laughs> my husband is a very picky eater you guys um he yeah he is in, almost impossible to cook for uh so i don't yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what is your favorite food now um mine would probably be um you know i like a lot of i mean if i was to have be able to have whatever i wanted Every day, if I had someone cook for me, it would probably be like healthy fish, uh, vegetables. Um, I love potatoes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it would just be the typical I meal. I don't have a, a favorite food. Um, I just, I like everything, basically. Um, I guess the only thing I don't really care for, you know, Mediterranean would probably be mine. I love Mediterranean. You do. I do. I love So do I. Yeah, you do too. But what's your favorite? My favorite, uh, well, just like Laura said that she's she's Hispanic, uh, I myself am, am Italian. And my favorite, I, I mean, I can't lie, it's pizza, pasta. <laughs> it, you guys, the man eats horrible. Absolutely the most unhealthy eater you would ever see in your life. You would be horrified. All he eats is starches and... Um, candy and yeah just nothing healthy is in his diet uh, i have to force him to eat a piece of broccoli when i make it so yeah he can't one piece one piece yep he has to tiny. he can't leave the table until <laughs> he eats his one piece so um he, yeah he's the most un unhealthy eater and look at him he doesn't have any health problems he stays pretty fit um but he's a mechanic so all of his you know work is physical so, yeah, I'm quite jealous of that. So, he gets to eat anything he wants. And, of course, pasta and, and uh, you got a lot there, didn't you? Yeah, yep. sorry about that. <laughs> um, pasta and pasta, pizza. pizza is his diet. So, now I let this sit on my head for 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> I let it soak. We were on another question. Does your family have uh, traditions? And... Our tradition is relatively new in my family. I would say the past maybe decade. Yeah. Um, every summer, usually around uh, Labor Day, except for this year, we're going to have it earlier because my son's wedding is coming. Um, we have a seafood boil at my sister's. She has a beautiful home, beautiful yard with uh, a pool, and uh, they do such a lovely job. And we literally have, I don't know how many pounds of crab legs um lobsters uh you name it the works it is amazing so we've been doing that for the past decade and we look forward to it every year uh so that's our family traditions and yours is uh my family tradition growing up um was always uh like a a family reunion my grandfather great grandfather had a farm and uh, lots of property, and we'd have the whole family there and gather up. And uh, but since then, uh, because the farm's been sold, and my, before my, the pandemic, and before the pandemic, uh, my my family, along with Laura, we'd have this uh, a yearly vacation where we go to Florida, somewhere in Florida. And or even as uh, uh, was we went to South Ar Arizona one Arizona. time. Arizona, um, we went to South Carolina. S South Carolina, um, but every year it, it's you know my mom, my dad, my sister, her, her husband, kids. her kids, me, Laura, our kid, and the kids' kids. <laughs> kids, kids. Yeah, it, it's just a big, big vacation. A great time, great time. Yeah, we. Yeah, we Hoping to get back on that track uh, now that hopefully things are going back to normal. Okay, so the next question is, what uh, do you think is your best quality? 
Mine's a double-ended sword. I was thinking about this when I read it that one day. Um, my best quality is when I go put my head into something, I really, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> when I put my head into doing something, I go full in. Uh, I don't just, you know, put my little toe in the water. I dive deep um, and I become almost obsessed. So that's where it's the double ended sword. It's a good thing, but it's also my worst quality because everything, you know, just revolves around whatever I get passionate about. So I'm super driven. I'm super hard worker, but it also can become a nuisance <laughs> on myself. Um, I, 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 you know, I don't push it on anybody else, but I put way too much pressure on myself, I think. And what is your best quality, my man? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> you have so many qualities. Um, I would say probably hard worker also. Very hard worker. Um, I mean, the man goes to work with spinal meningitis, literally. He had spinal meningitis and tried to go to work. Uh, we didn't know we had that at the time, but he was deathly ill, and he was still trying to go to work um, until we figured out something was terribly wrong. Um, I also went to work every day with um, a severely herniated... Uh, disc yes. in my lower back for a year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're both very hard workers um, at what we do. Um, so that is definitely your biggest, best quality. And I think we're pretty darn good parents. Um, I think that's a really good quality. Yes. Um, you know, we raised our son amazingly. The kid never really done anything that we, you know, was horrible. We did way worse as kids oh, yeah. than <laughs> son so yeah we did something right there um okay what activity makes you feel the most joyful when you're doing it uh, mine is definitely um we like to golf and kayak but kayaking is more my vibe uh he likes golfing i, I like golfing just because he does you know i go and for I like it. kayaking because she does <laughs> yeah. so uh but kayaking to me anything on the water um is so therapeutic to me in kayaking, you can either make it super fun, you know, go out and drink and have cocktails and have a fun river run, um, or you can make it as relaxing, you know, just going out and enjoying the waves or the sounds of the um, lake. And so kayaking is my favorite activity. Um, what is yours? Uh, well, like you said, golfing. Um, I also, I, I really like camping. I always have. Yeah. Um. She's a, a water-based person. I'm a land-based person. <laughs> um, but, you know, camping, it's, it's just out in nature, yeah. uh, you know. You, and I enjoy it. You I get the campfire. You get to, you know, to do the s'mores. and Yeah, I enjoy you know. camping if the accommodations are better. Tents really bother me because I feel like I'm in a plastic bag. Um, it's so hot and uncomfortable and... But, yeah, if I had a cabin or a camper, definitely yeah. I like that. I do. Um, okay, what's the next question? What would you do with your life if it suddenly became, if I suddenly became a billionaire? Him and I totally agree on this question. Uh, this is exactly what we would do. We've always said if we ever hit the lotto, um, we would buy acres and acres of land. And we would, um, you know, rescue as many pets as possible uh dogs, dogs cats, cats um goats i love goats uh <laughs> pretty giraffes much, pretty much any animal that needs rescuing or yeah. some sort of help yes that was, that was would De be our plan definitely we we love love every time we see a dog um that needs to be adopted we're like he goes let's, let's pick go, him up let's go get him <laughs> but no we well unfortunately in our accommodations we can't but that is what we would do. Um, what does your life compare to how you imagined it growing up? Completely opposite. I imagine myself being famous in lights, whether it would be from acting or singing, which I cannot do, but I think I can in my head. You can a little bit. No, in my head, I think I can, but I, yeah, no, no, it's, it's quite scary. But when I was a kid, I used to, we had a bar uh, in our basement and I would play records and totally be singing uh, to Blondie. And I seriously, that's how I pictured myself. Something famous in lights. Um, yeah, totally opposite.
<laughs> well, not not entirely. You have lights. You have oh yes, I have my lights here. Camera, yes, camera. Here. No phone. It's not even a camera. It's a phone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> mine is completely opposite. Um, uh, ever since I can remember, I've always wanted to be a police officer. Um, well, you were MP in the service. I did. I I went to college for law enforcement. I actually went into the military, U.S. Army, as a military police officer. Um, and, you know, so I got, I actually was able to live my dream a little bit. A little bit. Um, well, I'm certainly glad that you didn't. Right. Because I don't think we would be married. That's a tough, tough gig as a, as a, as a human, um, and as a spouse, uh, yeah. I, that's going to be very stressful. So God works in mysterious ways and everything happens, happens for, a, for reason. a reason. And I'm super glad he is not that because that is a very hard job. Let's see. What was your dream job when you were a kid? So yeah, that basically that was, it. was it. Yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> but that way we just got killed on, what was it? Two, Two birds with one, one stone. stone. Yeah, that's it. that's it. Okay. Were you popular in high school? He says, yes, I was. But he doesn't yes. even know me in high school. You know, we you didn't know me. The, the only reason why he says this is because I was a cheerleader. So everybody assumes if you're a cheer cheerleader, you're popular. That wasn't the case for me. I... I had acquaintances, a lot of people knew me only because of uh, being a cheerleader, but I wasn't in the popular group, believe it or not. I um, I kind of separated myself from that. I had more friends, I would say, outside of cheerleading uh, than in cheerleading. Um, so popular as of people knew me, yes, uh, I would say yes, but as being the popular girl, no, I definitely was not. <laughs> I was definitely not popular. Um... But again, a lot of people knew you. A lot of people knew me, but as the way I base it, she was invited to many parties, lots of friends, parties, you know. But that's only because I was part of the cheerleading group. Okay, but I was part <laughs> of the football group, and I was never invited to any parties. Um, I had one friend uh, in high school, and... Chris Lockman. Chris Chris Lachman, and I'm still friends with him today. Um, he lives in, in Portland. Oh, Portland, yeah. Uh, whereas I'm in Michigan, so it's kind of a long distance friendship. But popular, no, not at all. Even on the football team, wrestling team. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't know what they were missing. That's oh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, what is what was your favorite school subject growing up? Hmm. I was not a school person, you guys. I will admit that. I I struggled. Um, if I put my head to it, if I enjoyed the subject, I excelled in it. Um, but a lot of things, it just came hard for me. You know, I, I wasn't a horrible student. Um, I didn't take any extra classes, um, you know, for sure. I, I didn't push myself. School was not my gig. It was just not my gig. But if I had to choose a subject, it probably... The one that I probably did excel in um, to a certain point was science. I enjoyed science, but I hate math, so it was weird. Um, and I really enjoyed um, home ec. <laughs> I think I did. He laughs because he goes, he's, you know, he's like, you hate cooking. <laughs> and only because I hate cooking because he's so picky. Yeah, um, yeah so no, I, I just wasn't a school person. I was not a school person either. Um, no, you're, you're smart, though. Uh, my favorite class was history. Uh, Still is. I'm not a math person. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. We're uh, both not math people. But <laughs> but yeah, our poor son. History by far my favorite class. Absolutely. Okay, and the last question is, was there, embar was there an embarrassing fashion moment in your adolescence? Pretty much my whole adolescence. Um, I yes, he knows. He has seen pictures. Uh, I, uh, yeah, you guys. I went through so many phases. I went through a homeless looking phase, uh, where I thought it was fun to dress in oversized clothes like and lady. bag lady type. Uh, just picture that in your head. Um, probably the lady from Home Alone when he was in. Uh, yeah, the Central Park. Central Park with all of the pigeons. Imagine that. That's probably my outfit that I wore. And I went through a little house in the prairie phase. I went through the gothic play phase. Um, 
What else did I go through? So oh my gosh, my the hairstyles. Hair yeah, yeah. The typical 80 nightmare. Uh, that was, yeah. So many fashion disasters. And him, yes, you remember the story with what he was wearing when I met him. That was one. That was yes. one. Um, and then. Well, I remember growing up. Uh, let's put it this way i was the epitome of lloyd christmas from <laughs> dumb and dumber my mom cut my hair um, we got to find that picture due to multiple accidents as a child uh my two front teeth were split had a notch out of both of them so we got to find that picture was, he literally was, looked like a young lloyd christmas i did on um, dumb and dumber yes you and, did and you know they they Get me clothes with like collars that are like eight inches long. So yeah, that's poor Daryl. He went through so many fashion disasters too. But I also, think. I was a fashion trendsetter. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, way before the um, uh, what's the name of the Seattle scene? Grunge. Grunge, yes, but way before the grunge scene, you know, I was dressing like that for years. Yeah, and it's a, it, it's always funny because like I. Daryl would come out and some. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And I kid you not, like within six months, people were wearing the same thing. You know, I'm like, you're ahead of your time and you just don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is it, you guys, of all the questions. Thank you to uh, all of you that did participate and give us these great questions. Uh, we had so much fun answering them, even behind the scenes. And then today, great questions we absolutely really good questions. really good questions we had a great time and um what i'll do now is just let my uh, head marinate here for a while <laughs> and uh, i'll come back after my hair is complete and uh no get back at it get back at it so yes i hope you guys enjoyed uh meeting my husband daryl uh he will probably now run into a hole and never come out again because he is sweating profusely. I am so he nervous. I'm is sorry. So I'm... nervous. He's he's very, very camera shy. He hates his voice. All right, you guys, so I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so my hair is all done. He does such a good job, you guys. Um yeah, I could never do all of it on my own. I could always get the front of it, but never um, all of it. I've already blow dried my hair, uh, put a few curls in. If you want to see a video of that craziness with all my brushes, it's in that shower vlog. Uh, it goes through those steps. So I'm just going to show you what I do now after it's blow drying and I put a few curls in it. I didn't put as many curls I did, you know, as I did in that vlog. Uh, this is kind of my everyday go-to. So let's first off begin with products I use because I know some of you had asked uh, regarding that, I don't remember it was here or TikTok, but I might as well go through everything now, you guys. Okay, this here, you guys, is amazing. I get it through Amazon, and I put it on my hair while it is um, wet, and it just soaks all of the water out of my hair, and it's just for less drying time. So I, everything that I have, I will try to put in the description box if I can find it online, um, but this I know I got through Amazon, and it's huge i mean it is very big so uh this is wonderful and then for my shampoo and conditioner i use uh these i also get those on amazon this time i didn't i got it at walmart um and they're much smaller than the ones on amazon so it's a better deal i think on amazon because these were like eight each and on amazon um it's just a lot larger for eleven dollars so either way but i love using these products because um, it's sulfate-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and mineral oil-free. So, and honestly, you guys, I watched, um, I think his name's Mario or something. He's one of those hairdressers that's amazing. And he says all you guys need is one pump, and, and it's true. Now, the thing is you won't get that lather that you're used to, but if you use more than what's needed for your hair, that's what weighs it down. Um, so, ever since I've been doing that, my hair... Um, has really changed you know it doesn't get heavy as quick um, dyeing it always helps you know it takes strips all that out but once a week I do do this as well and it helps strip all of the products that I use out of my hair and this I get at Walmart as as well and this is called heritage I believe let me read up on what it says so yeah I just put it in my roots uh, once a week but this also is sulfate free um paraben free silicone free and gluten free mineral oil free 
uh, color safe and cruelty free vegan. So that is wonderful. I absolutely love that stuff once a week. And then after I get out of the shower, after washing and conditioning my hair, yeah, I use the Beyond the Zone and this is a smooth criminal and I just spray it in my hair and it helps detangle. Um, and what it is, is it like a hair primer they say. So I've been using this, you guys, well over probably 10 years. And I use it every day, you know, when I wash my hair. Now, I try to only wash my hair twice a week. Um, if I could get away with even less, I would. But, um, yeah, I definitely do not wash it every day um, because my hair will become extremely dry. After my hair has dried in this little towel, I put on about five drops of this through the ordinary um, and just put it in my hair. And this just helps, I think, with the frizz. Um, and it just, it seems like it's keeping my hair pretty healthy. And this is 100% uh, cold press virgin marula oil. So yeah, I put about five drops of that. Then I blow dry style. Um, and then now I'm going to do the final steps. And as you can see, it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's a little flat, but that's okay. I mean, you know, I'm not a big, huge fan of the big hair anymore, but I try to give it some volume. And this I find truly helps. Now, the problem with this is I seem to be going through this like crazy So because I love it so much, but it's not cheap. It's like $15, and I'm finding like I'm having to purchase three <laughs> a, week, a month, um, two or three bottles of this a month. So, yeah, but it's a working texture spray, and what I do at this point is I just put it, I just go through, and I put it all at my roots, um, just at the root, root of my hair. Okay, so when I'm done, it looks a little like this. And then what I'll do is sometimes I will brush it out um, or sometimes I'll just use my pick here, which that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm just kind of kind of give it just a little bit of volume, separate some of these curls. Um, and I kind of keep these ones like this until I do the next step, in which you'll see. So right now I'm just adding a little texture to my hair in volume. Okay, so now we look like this. <laughs> and then what I do is, okay, this is another product, you guys. I will never live without. If they stop making this, I'm doomed. Uh, so I've used these two products for over a decade. I get mine on Amazon. That's where I find the best price on this. And this is Bedhead, and this is the after party. I use about that much, and then I just rub my hands together, get it nice and warm, and then I just go through and kind of just... Put it all through my hair and take it through here and I'm telling you you guys my hair just keeps its curl when I use this now you got to be careful with the amount because it is um you know like um there is like a little bit of slippiness to it so if you use too much I think it would look greasy um so I just know because I've been using it for so long how much to use but you're gonna see even the spots that looked a little frizzy are going to calm down and look smooth. So that's why I absolutely love this stuff. And I find that my hair um, lasts longer throughout the day when I use this. And yeah, a lot of this stuff, the, the curls were calmed down throughout the day. Um, so that is pretty much it, you guys. That's all I really do to my hair every day and as you can see I got that nice shine it took away that frizz um that you know was throughout the hair another thing I find too you guys when I curl with um a flat iron it really takes that frizz out um so I never I I don't even think I can't remember the last time I used a curling iron on my head um for a while I was using the what was it called the time uh the one that but it is so hard for me to use and I think it was actually damaging my hair. So now I'm just using Lalange, I believe it is, flat iron. Any flat iron works. So then the final step is I've been using uh, Sexy Hair and this just uh, the Big and Sexy Hairspray. Um, hairspray I'm not a real stickler on. I mean, you know, if I can find something, this one seems to be working. It's a little drying so I still might switch on this. This I am not married to. <laughs> so now I just go in and I basically just do a very light layer 
make sure I get my crown because I do have, I have a pretty large colic back here. So I do spray a, quite a bit back there and a little bit around my curls. And do a little final run through with my fingers. And that is it, you guys. Uh, that is pretty much what I do with my hair um, when I do style it. Now this will last. I might have to put a few curls in tomorrow, uh, but also real quick, um, I will tell you a little secret. At night, I put all of my hair up in a silk scrunchie. It can be any silk scrunchie, you guys, and I kind of like do that little bun, you know. I just <laughs> put it in, and I put it like I'm going to do a ponytail and just, you know, do that little bun thing. I don't know how to explain it, but I do that at night, so when I take it down, I still, I have a lot of volume, and all I got to do is throw in a few curls, um, to calm some of the areas down. Okay, you guys, that is pretty much all I do for my hair. If I've forgotten anything, I'll put it in the description box below. And all the products that I do use will be listed down there as well. I hope you enjoyed meeting my husband. He is quite the gem. I love him to death. And yeah, so if you enjoyed today's video, if you please give it a thumbs up. That truly, truly helps my channel. All right, you guys, until next time.